Hello, this is Pastor Tim Miller from St. John's Lutheran Church, New Minden. Welcome to the children's message. Woohoo! And today we are celebrating 500 years since an important event that happened April 18th, near of our Lord, 1521. I have a couple of helpers here to help tell you about this. And by the way, there are a couple of links on the church's website, stjohnsnewminden.org. And under worship services, you should be able to find a couple of links from a couple of movies about Dr. Martin Luther and what happened 500 years ago in April 1521. My helpers today are a pastor from Missouri, Jake, Pastor Jacob Miller. Hello. And a Lutheran teacher from Northern Illinois, Paul Miller. It's great to be here. Okay. And they know more about this than I and are able to talk about it. So... Can you tell us, in 1521, what was the event that happened 500 years ago that we remember? Well, it was the Diet of Worms. Diet of Worms? Eww! Worms! Yeah, but it, they weren't actually eating worms. Well, I, I've eaten worms before. They were, they were not bad, really. I mean, I've eaten worms, too, to impress my VBS class, but... <clears throat> well, those, those were caterpillars that I ate. Mine were yeah. nightcrawlers. Yeah, nightcrawlers, yeah. Those, they're bitter, nightcrawlers are. I thought they tasted like dirt. Yeah, um, anyway. What, what kind of worms? <laughs> you ate, in Africa, you ate... They're, they're Malpani worms, but they, they're really they're caterpillars. But it, it's a different thing altogether, because the diet of worms actually has nothing to do with eating or with worms. Um, it's a meeting, and that's what they called... It, it, was, it was called a diet, and it happened in this city called Worms. And it was an official meeting that the uh, the emperor would have with his princes and some of the, the other leaders every every year, a couple of years, to talk about the business they needed to for their country. So meeting, not eating. Meeting, not eating. Yes. Okay, and the place was Worms, or as the Germans would say, Worms, a city in Germany. Okay, and that happened 500 years ago. All right, and why was Martin Luther there at that diet, that meeting? Well, one of the, the really sad things about this time is that the people, uh, the pastors and the churches, uh, were saying some things that didn't line up with what the Bible said. Uh, they were telling people that they couldn't be sure they would go to heaven. And they said that it wasn't just Jesus dying on the cross, but you needed to do stuff too. And people would never be sure if they'd given enough money or done enough good things to be sure that they could go to heaven. And Martin Luther read the Bible. He was a pastor at that time. And he found out that that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that we are saved by grace alone, by what Jesus has done for us by dying on the cross and rising again. That paid our sins completely. And he started to write about that. And people didn't like that he was saying things that disagreed with the people in charge. And so that's why uh, he was on trial there at the Diet of Worms. And this was very serious. Uh, a lot of people thought they would put Martin Luther to death. Right then and there because of, of what he said disagreeing with them. So what did, what did Luther say there at, at this meeting when he's called before the emperor 500 well, years ago today? Well, they asked him to take back everything he had said. And he said that unless they would show him from the Bible where he was wrong, he wasn't going to do that. His conscience was captive to the word of God alone. And, and what does that mean? His conscience was captive to the word of God alone. Well, that means that the, the way that he was thinking was, was kind of uh, shaped by God's word, that he didn't want to do anything that God's word you know, didn't kind of set forward and agree with it. You know, if God's word said this, then that's what he was going to do. That's what he was going to say. That's what he was going to tell everybody. Um, he wanted to share what God had shared in his word. And this really took a lot of courage for him to say. This uh, Charles V, the emperor, was probably the most powerful man in the world at that time. And he was saying that right to his face. Uh, and like we said before, it could mean his death. 
It is certainly the Holy Spirit helped him and gave him strength here to give a bold confession of his faith. And he didn't know what was going to happen, did he, once he made his confession of his faith? He, he didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, now, he, he got to leave that meeting, and some of his friends uh, kind of had him, him kidnapped, and they took him away to a castle, Wartburg Castle, where he was safe. Um, but yeah, you know, people were very worried about what was going to happen to him uh, there at that point. And what did he do while he was in the castle at Wartburg? Well, that's when he translated uh, the New Testament into German. So regular people could read the Bible in their own language. For a long time, there weren't very many books and not many people could read. Uh, but a new invention, the printing press, uh, made it so more there could be more books and more people were learning how to read. So Martin Luther helped make it possible that people could read the Bible in their own language. Ah, and I know it was Martin Luther's translation into German that helped the English speaking people that encouraged them to translate the Bible into English as well. So we've benefited from that, that work too, we who speak English. And also here in our congregation, a lot of people, well, for a lot of our history, that was, or translations based on that, was the, what we used when uh, church and, and the Bible was read in German here. Here at St. John's New Minden, they used Luther's Bible for many years, that's right, the translation that he did. All right, so uh, for us today then, so how does the Diet of Worms still, what does it say to us today? What should we think about? What do we thank God for today, 500 years later on this Here I Stand Sunday? Well, a few things. Uh, for one, we can be certain of going to heaven because of what Jesus did for us. Um, and Martin Luther, speaking out boldly, helped it so that we can hear, can hear that message from our parents and pastors and teachers today. Another thing is that we can read the Bible in our own language. So, uh, so that way you're not relying on someone else to say to tell you exactly what the bible says but you can see for yourself what the bible says what god's word is and martin luther also helped bring religious freedom to places so people couldn't tell you where and when to go to church either and what he did in saying that he was depending on god's word alone is really important for us too uh, that his, his conscience, he said, was captive to the word of God, and that if anyone was going to prove him wrong, they needed to do that from the Bible uh, and from, from common sense, kind of based on what the Bible says. And that's really important for us still today because we need to have that same kind of idea of the, putting God's word uh, first in our life like that to let God's word drive us. And, and here's why. This is what uh, it says in John 20, verse 31. These things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. God's word gives us life. That's where God makes his promise is to us to forgive our sins. Uh, the, that's where we hear about how Jesus died for us and rose again. And it's where God promises us everlasting life. And so that's why we stand alone on the word of God. Very good. And that reminds me of the children's song, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the word for me. Let's close with a prayer, shall we? Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for those who went before us, who stood firmly on your word. People like Dr. Martin Luther, though he was a sinner, yet you used him to stand firm on your word and trust in you and proclaim just what the Bible says. And help us to do the same today, to believe everything you tell us in your word, but nothing more and nothing less so that we might be certain of our salvation through you, Lord Jesus, and receive your guidance as to how we are to live today. Help us stand firmly on your word all the days of our life and help our church to continue to stand on your word as well. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.